So for the last classic, I won't go into all of the geometric theory stuff, I won't do the heavy computations, but I will talk about the setup behind dealing with a typical annuity problem in the hopes that it will help you understand what's going on and thus get you more accustomed to beginning these types of questions. So in an annuity problem, I'm going to be given three ingredients which I have on my iPad. So firstly, we have either a deposit or a withdrawal value to make at the end of every year. In my case, I'm depositing 2K. And I also have a rate that I'm being given compound interest at, in which case I have 10% per annum here. And I also have a frequency, which in my case will be yearly, and I'll assume it's going to be yearly for both the deposit and the rate to simplify a few things. Now, the idea is that when setting up such a problem, we introduce this AN notation, and AN is going to measure the balance after N something. But the question is, what is that something? As it turns out, the something is actually entirely dependent on the frequency, and because I'm dealing with a yearly frequency, I'll let AN be the amount after N years. And then I can begin my whole recursive setup. So I assume that initially I have a balance of 10 grand. And then basically this is the formula for the recursive process, but I'll explain what's going on in this example. At the end of the first year, my opening balance will be invested at a rate of 10% per annum. So that's times 1.1. And then I'll add my deposit value on the end. And then if I sub in my expression for a naught, I will get 10,000 times 1.1 plus 2,000. But then I now do the same thing. So the balance at the end of the second year will be the balance at the end of the first year compounded by 10% interest again plus another 2,000. And it turns out that when I sub this expression in after a bit of expanding and rearranging, that is where my pattern starts to form. And then pretty much, I'll just demonstrate the idea, but basically, I will do it again. I won't write down the long expression, but basically, the balance at the end of the third year will be the balance at the end of the second year compounded again, plus another 2,000. And pretty much, after three times, the pattern starts becoming really obvious to the examiner, and then I can just jump to saying, oh, therefore, A is equal to blah, blah, blah. But pretty much, that is a setup that I'm interested in, and then after that, I can do all of my more tedious computations. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.